Okay, today was kind of a fast-paced lecture um, once I got done with the animations at the beginning. Um, and uh, as a result, I'm going to really just try to hit the highlights here so that you can just focus your attention on, on those components and not get overwhelmed by uh, the speed at which I, I had to cover things in lecture. The first thing I'll note is that um, I defined the stream function psi of x and y, which is in contrast to the potential, which is phi of x and y. And it's, of course, hard... Uh, to sometimes hear the difference between psi and phi. Um, the definition of the velocities based on the stream function are such that u is equal to the cross derivative of psi with respect to y, and v is minus the derivative of psi with respect to x. And with that definition, contours of psi are streamlines. So Psi is uh, the stream function is particularly convenient when you're looking to define streamlines, but um, usually we use the velocity potential in defining the flows. Although you could do it with stream functions. Okay, so there's the uh, the first element. Uh, the second thing is we we talked about the superposition of velocity potentials, and so we have phi of x and y, and if phi one and phi two solve Laplace's equation. Then we can define phi of x and y to be any linear combination of phi 1 and phi 2. Here I'll just add them. And we used that in defining all of our superpositions today, uh, which I'll talk about in just a moment. Once you have phi of x and y, the radial velocity component is simply the r derivative of phi, and the circumferential component is 1 over r d phi d theta. Okay, so given two functions that do satisfy Laplace's equation, you can combine them to define a new velocity potential, and then from that define the velocities um, that would be associated with that solution. Finally, stagnation points occur wherever u r and u theta are both zero. Okay? So both, both velocity components have to be zero. So that means once you've defined the velocities um, throughout our theta space, you can apply them in this equation, or this pair of equations, really, to define where the stagnation points are. All right, the examples that we did in lecture today was uniform flow plus a source. In that case, the stagnation points, and I'm going to just focus here on, on the stagnation points, are at theta equal to pi, and r equal to m over 2 pi u0. I won't, uh, I guess I, I'll just real quick do a sketch of the streamlines for this case. Um, so we have a streamline that divides the flow, the stagnation point sits right where that crosses the x-axis, and then the streamlines go around that in this way. Um, so that's the uniform flow plus a source. We did uniform flow plus a sink in which case we found that theta is equal to 0 and r is equal to, I'm going to say, the absolute value of m over 2 pi u0. A little different from um, how I presented it in, in lecture. I think there was some sign confusion with the way I did it. So I'll put absolute value of m so r is clearly positive. Finally, uniform flow plus a doublet creates flow around a cylinder. And the stagnation points for that are, that are at theta is equal to 0 or pi and r is equal to the square root of the doublet strength divided by the uniform flow strength. And in that case, I'll, I'll sketch the streamlines for that. I guess I should make it clear that uh, uniform plus a source is this top sketch. I did not sketch uniform plus a sink. And now uniform flow plus a doublet creates a closed streamline that is exactly a circle, and the streamlines split and move around that that point. Stagnation points on the front and on the back of that circle. Now there's a doublet sitting within that circle, but usually we don't worry about that, and we just think of this as a solid cylinder from the perspective of the external flow. Okay. So the velocity streamlines defined by the sum of uniform flow plus a doublet define u r and u theta. From those we could calculate that the magnitude of the velocity squared is ur squared. I'm going to undo that. 
Um, so let me actually let me just rewrite that so it's clear. V squared is equal to U R squared plus U theta squared. So the magnitude of velocity squared is the sum of those two components, which means we can use the Bernoulli equation, B o P over gamma plus Z plus V squared on 2G is now equal to a constant everywhere in the flow. And the reason it's a constant everywhere is that we are, by the constraint that we've imposed by thinking about potential flows, the flow is constant everywhere because we're using the velocity potential to define it, which means the vorticity is zero. Zero vorticity, irrotational flow means Bernoulli applies between any two points in the flow. All right, so very dense uh, follow-up here, um, but the highlights, again, just to, to hit them again, we define the stream function, but we do our solutions with the velocity potential. From the velocity potential, we use superposition to define stagnation points and the velocity field. The examples that we did, uniform flow plus a source, plus a sink, plus a doublet, create particular flow solutions. In any case, you can use the, the fields of the velocity to define the, how the velocity varies in space and therefore how the pressure varies in space.